Hi everyone, it's Ian here. This is the first video that I said I would send you and it's for slope analysis. Now, one of the tools we're going to use in the slope analysis is a tool that GRASS has developed. So we're going to need to open QGIS with GRASS. So you can open that from your desktop folder with the other QGIS applications or from your start menu. Okay, so QGIS with GRASS has opened and I notice that it's slightly different in that the uh, browser uh, window is not uh, open and docked. So I'm just going to go up here and turn it on. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to add some data from my browser. So I'm just going to navigate to a folder which is on my desktop. And it's a project folder for the information for this little video. And it is in here and it's a vector folder. And I'm looking to add the contours as well as the Kariha and then the surveyed farm portion boundaries. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to zoom to the, the Kariha extent. And that's what we've got. So we've got the, the, uh, the farm boundaries as a background. We might be using those as well as the Kariha boundary to give us an idea of what the extent will be. And then the actual contours that we're going to use to create the terrain model. Okay, so we're going to use the elevation data from this contour layer. And inside this contour layer, one of the, the fields or columns is a height layer or a height um, attribute. And we're going to use that number to calculate the, the surface or the, the terrain model. Right, so the, um, the tool that we're going to use is an interpolation uh, TIN tool. So we're going to open that from the, the uh, processing toolbox. And if we just type in TIN, that should show us a couple tools. And this is the one we're going to use here, TIN interpolation. So let's open that. And then we can close this window down. Okay, so the vector layer we're going to use as our surface or our elevation data is contours. And then the field, as I mentioned, is height. So we select height and then we add it as the height or the layer to use. We can also change the pixel size. Now this will be the size of each of the cells, the elevation value for each of the cells. And currently that pixel size is a little small and you can see there's quite a few rows that are going to be added to the final grid. So we, if we change it up to two meters and two, maybe even five, five is pretty big. Let's work with five and you can choose the pixel size you want. So this is going to be each of the cells or the squares is going to be 5 meters by 5 meters. So you can choose the cell size depending on what sort of resolution you want for your output DTM. Okay, so that's it. Now we can save it as a new file. So let's just double check the extent for the model. So let's just go up slightly and we're going to set the extent to to an area that we'll select on the actual map view. So over here, you can you can actually set a layer to clip to, or we can choose the extent. So we're going to say select extent on canvas, and then it just gives us a, a little uh, cross, and we drag a box over the area that we want to calculate the surface model for, and I think that should be sufficient. And with those settings all set, we can click on Run, and that'll create a temporary uh, DTM. Okay, th and there we go. So mine's finished. I just paused the video briefly so that the process could run through. But just wait until that runs through and then what should happen is it should add a new raster layer to your project called Interpolated, which is the digital elevation model based on those contour settings that we chose. So we can close down this interpolation window now. Okay, great. So now if we look at this, we have got a surface model that we can now calculate the slope with. So let's calculate the slopes for that layer now. And you can calculate the slopes from the raster drop-down menu. If we go to analysis and then select slope, and then we just need to make sure that the, the correct input layer is chosen. And there is only one raster with an elevation uh, uh, attribute, so that's the interpolated option. And if we scroll down, we can, we can create a temporary file again and then click Run. And that was quick enough. Now, 
you will create a, an either a temporary or permanent file depending on what you want to do with this later layer. So at that point you could have chosen to create a permanent file and then just save it onto your drive. But in this instance I've just got two temporary layers here. And this is the slope. Now in QGIS, slope is measured in degree of inclination where 0 degrees will be flat and 90 degrees will be vertical. And if we just quickly have a look at what that looks like, we've got um, our degrees here. So this is theta. Now if this line was flat w w along x, it would be 0. And if it was vertical, it would be 90 degrees. So that is what this, uh, this angle represents. It rec represents the steepness of the slope. And to calculate um, various angles for, for our slope, for instance, if we wanted to calculate the slope of 1 in 5, we would then need to solve for inverse tan, um, what is it, y divided by x. So that's 1 divided by 5, inverse tan. And that will give us a, a theta of 11.3099324 degrees, and that will be the uh, degrees of inclination for that particular range of slope. Okay, so I can show you what that looks like on a calculator. If you open up your calculator, and I think this option has got the scientific option for it. So if we choose scientific. Okay, so that's, let's then calculate for a slope of 1 in 5. So what that means is for every 5 meters you travel across the ground, you're going to travel up in elevation by 1 meter. So 1 over 5, so we can go 1 divided by 5 equals 0 0.2 and then what we need to do is go inverse tan is 11.3099324 so that's calculating theta for a slope of 1 in 5 and in the same way we can solve for a slope of 1 in 3 so 1 divided by 3 and then we're going to go inverse tan well we're going to go equals first and then inverse inverse 10 and then we've got a degree of inclination of 18.434948 and we can end it there we don't need that many decimal places so those are those are two um, slopes that we can solve for and I'll show you how to do that using the raster calculator actually we're going to use a reclassification so a raster reclassification right so let's see how we do that so this is where we are going to use one of the grass tools that will now be uh, in this uh, version of QGIS. So, because this is QGIS with grass, so let's open up our processing toolbox, and we're going to search for something called it's a raster reclassification. So if we just type in reclass, it's R reclass, this one here. So we open up that raster reclassification. And then it's got it's looking for the input raster, so slope is fine, that's the correct one to put in. And then what we need to do is actually type in or copy and paste in the actual values, and this is the format that it is in. So we're looking at a slopes, slopes from one from zero through to one and five. And that we solved as eleven point three zero. So it looks like this through eleven point three zero nine nine three two four. And so those are the actual slopes we're looking for, but we, re we are reclassifying it to the value 1. And then for the next value, we can go 11.3099324 through, and then this is the slope of 1 in 3, which was 18.43494 equal to 2. And then everything steeper. We can go, and I think if we if we have a look at our, our little um, slope rest over here, the, the top value is 79. So we can maybe choose 80 just to make sure it includes all of the values. But we want to go from 18.43, oops, 43494, and it is through, and let's just call it 80, equal to 3. So now we're going to tell the we're going to tell the program to give us three new categories, and these will be the categories that will be assigned. And what we'll do is just create a, a grid cell size of five, which will be the same as our our input DEM that we created. And in this instance, I'm going to create a permanent file. So I'm going to select this button and say Save to File, and then go and put it in a new folder here. We'll go New, and we'll.
we'll call it raster just so we get it in the right place raster and in this instance what shall we call it um let's call it slope 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 cats for slope categories okay so i know what that is i'm going to save and then run and then wait for that to calculate Okay, so there we go. So now what we've got is a new raster which has been added. Um, it's got the values of 1, 2, oh, what is it? Yeah, it's 1, 2, and 3. All these other values we don't actually, we're not necessarily interested in. So let's go and see if we can re-symbolize that using the single band, single band pseudo color. If we go back to palette values, what we can do is actually just delete all these other values that we don't need. And say apply. What you could actually do is type in here what those slopes were. So that was the slopes of uh, well, it's zero to eleven point three zero nine three two four. So that was eleven eleven point three zero nine two four to eighteen point four three four nine four, and everything steeper. So I guess you can go. Yeah, well, it's two, 280 in this instance. That's what we calculated for. So 0 0.343, 280. So that's just the label uh, that will show up in the legend. And you can put anything there, whatever makes sense to you. If you, you can even put in what the, what the, um, the slope is, 1 in 3 to 1 in 5, 1 in 5 and steeper. Okay, and that's how it looks. So now, looking at that, we can see that the yellow areas are steeper than 1 in 3. The areas that are green are between 1 and 3 and 1 and 5, and everything that is purple is flatter than 1 and 5. Okay, so we can maybe turn off our toolbox now, and maybe a better way of looking at it would be to, to reclassify, or not reclassify, but, but re-label re this and do something like this, one, 1 in 5, and then 1 in 5 to 1 in 3. Oh, nothing happened there. 1 in 5 to 1 in 3. And then it's 1 in 3 and steeper, so greater than 1 in 3. So maybe that, that would make more sense to, to label it like that. Okay, and then the other thing uh, I think I'll just show you while we are looking at this raster and this slope analysis is just to create a hill shape. So under the raster menu, we can select uh, which it's analysis, I think it is, yes. And then if we select hill shade, we're going to use our interpolated uh, surface, which was the terrain model. And we'll create a temporary one just for this example and click run. And that'll create a hill shade for our model. And then if we just change the, the, um, the transparency for this hill shade, we'll get an idea of where the slopes are. So let's just change this transparency down to to maybe something like 40. Let's see how that looks. Can't really see it. I'm going to make it a little darker. Something like that. And you get an idea of, of what you can do with a hill shade by just adjusting the transparency. And looking at this model and the hill shade, we can see that the, the steeper areas are reflected by the shadows on the hill shade. Uh, another example might be to turn off all the um, well, turn off the, the the slope that we've created, and then just have the the elevation model on. And if we turn that on and off, you can see what I mean by that. It it shows up quite nicely. And in fact, with that coloring, we can change this this transparency right down to 40, and it might be slightly better. And in fact, we can change this to a green and the yellows. So we'll go to properties, have a look at the single band pseudo color, and then that's a good option. So it was defaulting to this color ramp, which will be perfect. So we'll apply that and say OK. And if we flick between the two, you can see what the hill shade can do for our for our model. And then finally, what you might want to do is just put some other layers on. You can maybe put the uh, farm boundaries on top, turn off the brush. You can actually label those. The uh, the other study area boundaries that you are interested in. Change that slightly. 
and that's pretty much it. So that's that's really all I wanted to to show you in this tutorial. And uh, I hope it's going to be useful if you guys are looking to do your own slope analysis. In this example, we converted the the elevation layer, which was the contours, and then we interpolated a, a tin from that. But if you ha already have uh, an elevation surface, like the SRTM data that you can download online, if you have the 30 meter SRTM, you can go straight into creating a slope for that without having to actually create the elevation surface from a another layer. And that's how you do that. So hopefully it's been useful. Give me a shout if you have any questions. Cheers.